Right, a couple of days later, and the ESC is now completely coated in epoxy resin. Here's the one I've messed about with, and here's a brand new one that I haven't touched yet. Uh, I managed to get two of these because they are so cheap compared to your kind of your Novaks and your Tekins of these world. These are Hobby King X Car ESCs uh, are so cheap they're not disposable, but um, you can certainly get a couple, and if one blows up, you've got a spare, which is useful. Right, so what's happened to this? Uh, in essence, uh, you've got um, a main circuit board in the middle here, and then you've got um, a daughter board underneath that plugs into the main board, which is in there. And then on top, the other side, you've got some other components that the heat sink goes onto. So you need to waterproof underneath and on top. So I'm now going to show you uh, what I've done to this. And uh, I'll, I'll show you the start, I'll just talk over it, and then we'll just go into some sped up bits. So first of all, you need to take your ESC apart. Now this will void, uh, void? What's void? This will void your warranty. Um, do beware that any kind of modifications like this kiss goodbye to your warranty. Also, um, just simply running your RC in water uh, will void your warranty. So if you just go and buy a model and then you start driving it underwater, <laughs> if it breaks and you go back to your hobby store and say, well, it's not working. And I say, what were you doing to it? Uh, well, I drove through a stream. Um, chances are you're not going to have any kind of warranty come back on that. So running through water, even if you don't modify your components, um, is a bad idea from a warranty point of view. And to be honest with you, it's a bad idea from your model's point of view. Um, I, on, on a bit of a mission to get my SCX-10 completely waterproofed so I can go through water whenever I want to, generally I'm just going to be going through puddles and stuff. And I know it's super splash proof, but if I need to afford a stream, that's fine, I can do that. However, it will ruin your model over time. Even if you do coat your drivetrain in silicon spray and whatnot before you run it, uh, you will find all the nuts and bolts start to rust up. Um, it's not good for your model, so I wouldn't recommend it. But anyway, if you want to, this is what you do. So here is this um, Hobby King ESC. I've now undone the four bolts. It holds the heatsink on, and it also holds this bottom case off. That comes off, and you can see here you've got two circuit boards. Um, now be careful when you're touching these. If you've been walking around on carpet or something, you might be electrostatically charged. Put your hand down on something. I've got some metal behind me, luckily, that's earthed, so I can earth myself. Now this daughter board, if you give it a wiggle, that just comes off. Be really careful how you pull this in and out. These pins are quite, um, quite weak and you can bend them. Also, when you put it back on, make sure that this is coming in absolutely square. Uh, otherwise, you might put it on not quite right and bend one of the pins. So, this needs to be epoxy resin coated, so does this here. Right, so with the daughter board removed, uh, you can see that there's these power MOSFETs here. These need to be covered up. So what we're going to do is um, coat this, but the thing with epoxy resin is it's really, really um, runny to start with, uh, and it will just kind of run off this and run around the sides. It'll be a total mess. So you kind of need something to hold it on. We're going to use this, but obviously if we just pop this back on top, uh, can't fill it up. I could flood in there, but then how am I going to get this back in? Uh, problem. What you do with a Dremel, he says, where have I put my Dremel? Hang on a moment. Um, get a Dremel, or if you don't have one, I guess you can use a drill or whatever you've got, a file, and cut the bottom off of the case. Right, so I've just done four cuts with the Dremel on each side. Now be really careful with the corners. They've got these screw holes in uh, for mounting this back on. You do not want to cut into those. So that's taken most of the material out and then I'm going to use uh, a smaller bit here just to go in and file in around the corners. horrific thing to do to your brand new ESC but there you go so that's the the bottom cut out now needs a bit of cleaning up but uh, we'll do that off camera just with a, an exacto knife so we've now got a nice hole here so we can put this back on now you need to there's a, a cut out here for the sensor uh, plug you need to make sure you get this around the right way so that goes around like that so there's the sensor plug there so this will go back on that way around now do not start putting epoxy resin in at this point. 
obviously it will come out the hole. You could plug the hole, but the problem you'll get is um, you cannot fit this straight, this daughter board straight back in because it needs to tuck under, needs to tuck underneath the case and come out there. What I found the best thing to do is to simply just chop off um, this end piece here. Right, so here is our completely hacked up uh, bottom case now. So the reason for chopping that off is that we can fix this back on and um, put the screws back on to hold it and we can start to fill this up with resin and all we want to do is to fill it up just to cover these components here. You do not, absolutely do not want to cover these connectors up on top because you want to plug back into those soon. So we're going to probably fill it up to about that deep. Now, obviously, if you put this back on and you start filling it up, the resin is just going to fall out of this hole that we've just made here. So you need to plug that. And a really good thing for plugging that is, he says, finding his box for the other ESC. Um, obviously, depending on what ESC you're doing, you may or may not have the same packaging, but certainly in the Hobby King one, um, in the package you have this really nice dense foam um, so just chop with a really sharp blade so watch out for your fingers now you want to chop out a section that's fractionally wider than the gap just so it squeezes the foam to hold it in place and what this foam is going to do is just wedge in that hole and stop the epoxy resin falling out and you may be thinking well hang on the resin is going to stick to it and I won't be able to get it out don't worry, uh, it just peels off really easily. Um, I'm not an expert on epoxy resin. <laughs> to be honest with you, I've only used it once or twice before, quite a long time ago, for completely uh, unrelated things. But um, it is fairly forgiving to work with. If you stick tape on, you can peel the tape off when it's set. Right, so here's our little uh, lump. So what we're going to do is get the original mounting screws and put them back in. I won't do it now, but put them back in. That will hold this in place. And then you just pop this in, and wedge that in like so. Now you've got to remember that this connector here, this um, sensor connector, is what we're making this gap for. And if you look when you fit this back in, that, that connector does slightly go inside the case. So you want to make sure your foam is just slightly inside but not so much that it's going to stop the resin getting all round all the components. So what I found in that corner just there, um, if you can see this, just, just where this connector is here, you just need to cut the foam away slightly there. Anyway, so what, once you've done that, you can start to fill that up with resin. I'll go and do that in a little bit. And that's the underside part one. Then we want to reintroduce the daughter board, but the daughter board has got components on this side here that need to be epoxy resined. So for that, get some masking tape, um, you know, DIY masking tape, um, whatever, doesn't matter, body shell masking tape's fine. You want to stick that around the side and where you've got these little uh, cutouts where the screws go past, you need to make sure the tape goes in there because you don't want the resin leaking out. Basically, with a number of pieces of tape and a bit of time and fiddling, you want to completely wrap all the way around I'm not doing it very well because I'm doing it quickly on camera for you. But you want to essentially wrap all the way around <clears throat> like so. Take a bit more time. Make sure that the tape is slightly coming away from the circuit board, not sticking on the components because you want to get the resin overlapping the components to the edge of the board. But you get the idea like that. Now what you want to do then is to fill that up with resin only high enough, and this is really important, only high enough, if I just take the tape off again because you can't see, Fill it up just so it gets to uh, the top of this black part of these riser connectors and then obviously make sure that you've got stuff covering everywhere else. If you go up above here then you're going to get resin on these connectors and you won't be able to plug it back in again. Right so that is um, how to do that side of the daughter board. So let that resin set. Obviously the cure time of your resin will depend on what you 
buy. Uh, the stuff I'm using is uh, this stuff here, Bob Smith Industries Slow Cure Epoxy. Um, it says 30 minute cure. Um, it actually says on the bottle about 8 minutes until you can start to handle it, 24 hours total cure time. It, what it really means is that after about 30 minutes it will stop being super runny, but it's still really quite soft. Uh, the good thing about that resin is it is very very runny when you mix it up so it will nicely flow and creep around everything so um, do the kind of underside if you like of the daughter board and resin in here well the other thing i forgot to mention was um, because the, if you're using a very very thin resin be very careful it can actually um, creep underneath these riser connectors here and it will capillary up the holes and you can end up with a connector completely full up with resin Obviously you won't be able to plug back into it um, what I've done to solve that in the past is and you can buy these little um, sort of riser connectors just on eBay if you pull the pins out of these then you'll end up with a bunch of things looking like this these are the gold pins that go in it so then you can take those and stick them in you can see the resin i've got on one i did earlier stick those in the holes it's quite time consuming but you do need to do this so you fill up the holes with these pins and that will stop the resin flowing up while it's setting obviously you've got six on that side six on that side another two so you do need to go and buy a bunch of those little connectors from somewhere or if you've got some other solution for plugging up those holes and stopping it capillaring up let me know um, I've done a speed control with Plastidip in the past and uh, I did find the Plastidip uh, capillary right up and uh, the epoxy will do a similar thing. So um, once you've got the base part done and the underside of the daughter board, what you can then do is take the foam off and then you can fit the daughter board back in and obviously be really careful that uh, you get the pins lining up right. Also, I've rushed my um, cutting off of the case, and there's some uh, clearance issues. I just need to file that slightly. But uh, imagine you've got the daughter board plugged in, with the case in place, like so. So you're now at the stage where you can do your final fill here. So again, with some masking tape, and I'm uh, just rushing through this just to give you a rough idea get a nice clean straight piece of masking tape when you do this you need to mask off the little gap here above the sensor connector make sure that you push that right down onto the sensor connector so it won't leak out fill up all the holes around there so once you've got that you can then fill that up with resin let that set obviously you need to hold it horizontal for a long time and you'll end up with with this so that's the underside and then you have to tackle the top side well, why do you have to tackle the top side because and this is um, this is kind of an Achilles heel of this design of speed control um, things like a, um, a Castle Mamba Max Pro um, doesn't have this sort of daughter board thing and um, it's kind of a nicely reasonably one-sided setup to waterproof but this kind of layout and it is similar to the Novak Timbuk 2 that I wrecked in an earlier video um, it's got circuits above and below which is a bit of a pain to waterproof but you, you can do it right I'm just peeling the sticker off there so I can with a bit of a wiggle and a slight twist there we go it's, it's just held on by this heatsink tape there's the um, heatsink off I'll just unplug the fan cable on the other side of your circuit board, these are the things that really uh, suffer from the water. Lots of people plaster dip, you know, around the edge of the case, and then what will happen if you plaster dip? Water runs down the between the wire and the plaster dip because there's always going to be a tiny gap. It gets onto the circuit board, and then even if you've plaster dip part of the circuit board, the plaster dip because it shrinks at a microscopic level will lift itself off of here. So water creeps around, gets to these MOSFETs, and zap. So what we want to do is to um, epoxy on top of there, but not completely covering them. These uh, MOSFETs need to be able to touch on the underside of the heatsink. 
So for that, again, put um, masking tape all around the edge, but you want to overlap very slightly along this side and this side, because if you look at the heat sink, uh, it's not completely flat, it's got these little ridges on the side. Now the ridges on each side, they will need to touch down onto the circuit board, so you don't want to put resin right up to the edge. So when you stick your tape on, like so, you want to kind of uh, push it flat along the edge, probably about two, three millimeters, like so, so that that is keeping the resin off the edge there. Once you've built up a nice little uh, wall all the way around of masking tape, then you fill that up and you want to fill it up just up to the edge of these. So enough to cover the, um, you can see the solder there, just up to the top edge of the, the black bits of the MOSFETs and let that set. Once that's done, then you can take your heatsink, put your heatsink back on, reassemble the underside. And then what I did as a final step was I actually um, epoxy resined right down the edge here, all around the side and so on. You can see that better on the, the finished product. So although I've already got the top level uh, and the bottom level epoxied, I've then effectively sealed the case up all the way around so kind of got two levels of protection and also watch out for these um, allen screws here um, i've resined right around them but make sure that you don't fill up the uh, hex head otherwise you'll never be able to take this apart again should you need to be able to take it apart once you've resined it probably not anyway right that's a quick uh, potted summary haha <laughs> excuse the pun um, of how to do the esc Right, so there's the ESC back in the truck, and you can see it's on, and here's the LEDs shining nicely through the resin. really nice thing I like about the epoxy is um, you can see stuff through it still, which is really useful. So that's nearly ready to go and be used. Uh, the sensor connector here, I need to plastic dip around that to keep the water out. And these risers where you've got the receiver cable and the power switch, they need to be plastic dipped around the base and running up the cable about an inch just to stop the water coming down. That won't make them completely waterproof. The water will just get down the cable somehow, but it will keep the worst of it out. Right, so that's how you can waterproof your ESC using epoxy resin. Um, epoxy resin is a better, in my opinion, a solution for this type of ESC than plastic dip, uh, where you've got these MOSFETs coming out on the top here, uh, but then connecting to the heatsink, plastic dipping up and over the heatsink. It's not a perfect seal because plastic dip shrinks and will come away. Even if you think your plastic dip's running along the top of the heatsink, it's going to have tiny gaps. The water will get in there if you're going underwater. If you're just driving your truck through puddles and you want it splash proof, plastic dip's absolutely fine. But for hardcore um, submersion capability to go underwater and through streams, I do recommend you have a look at epoxy. I hope that was useful. Be aware of your warranty. Be really careful if you do try this. Any questions, pop them in the comments.